Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And this is part one of my How to Paint HeroQuest series where we're going to talk about getting the scenery and the models from the set prepared and ready for the painting process. Now you'll see I've dumped all the bits of scenery out of the plastic tray they come in and I won't be putting them back in that. I will talk a little bit about why later on. Now, getting these models ready for the painting process is a fairly quick and easy thing. Not something I normally cover on the channel, this kind of basic level of prep, but a lot of people that have watched my How to Play Hero Quest video, which I'll link down below, have said they've not done a war game in years, this is the first set they've picked up. So I think it's worthwhile talking about basic prep. Now, if that's not something that you need, then hunt out the next video in the series and we'll go through the painting. Now, I'm using three basic things to prepare these models. A good hobby knife, you'll see here, my particular favourite a couple of metal files and a pair of clippers to get rid of the bigger pieces we'll see. Now the majority of this cleanup I do with a hobby knife and you could do the entire set with that but I understand a lot of people don't like using hobby knives. Now I've done a video on hobby knives, this particular one in question, which I'll link down below. Just kind of set your mind at ease and think about how you might want to use a hobby knife and also you might want to pick up my particular favourite which this blue one is. Now the HeroQuest scenery is lovely scenery for the price. You know, it's not super, super detailed, but it is, it's a good um, set to be getting into and add some atmosphere to the series, but it has got a lot of mold lines and things on there. Now I really would recommend do what I'm doing here and clean these things down. Using your hobby knife to scrape off these mold lines, cut off the larger pieces, and then you might want to move into using a file just to file them down and make it smooth. Now, as I said, generally, I do all my cleaning up with a hobby knife, but I'm just kind of showing the two methods you might want to use because again, your, your preferred method might be slightly different to mine. So go around really careful, clean up as many mold lines as possible. If you miss a few, it's not the end of the world, but as we do the painting technique later, the more lines that are on it, the more it'll pick up uh, the paint later on, which we'll see when we do start painting it in the next videos, it will pick up that detail and that mold line and uh, the cleaner you make it, the better. Now on the bigger pieces of mold lines that are coming off here, you might want to get the clippers. Now these are a set of hobby clippers that I've bought, but they are literally exactly the same as a pair of wire clippers that you might have in your DIY kit uh, in the garage or whatever. So the bigger pieces you can clean up with that, but like I said, the majority of this I did with the hobby knife and the files. Um, so you don't need to invest in all these pieces of equipment. The cleaner you make them, as I said, the better. Now, moving on to kind of the issue with the plastic box that they come in. When you push the models and the scenery in there, it bends and twists the models itself. Now, what you need to do is just go around and straighten out those pieces, whether that be the candle on the table you've seen before, or the, the weapons on the weapon rack, or like here, the handles of the uh, models, and just bend them back into shape, and they will gradually curve back to that position that the... Um, black plastic thing has forced them into the straighter you can get them the better uh, and then it's the same process with these as we did with the scenery going around and scraping off the mold lines now the bigger pieces like this uh, have actually been made of multiple parts of plastic now I didn't find a problem with any of them but if you do find that the arms are coming off slightly you can just take a bit of plastic cement uh, poly cement or whatever and stick it into the gaps and you know glue the arms back on if you have that problem but I didn't feel the need to do this in this case now one really important things of models is the bases what a base on the model looks like can really impact the overall finished effect. Now I'm going for a super simple basing method on here. This is neat PVA glue that I'm just applying in a thin layer across the base and then I dip it in to some sand. Now this sand is, is literally play sand that you would buy for a kid's um, sand pit, which I bought a massive bag about 15 years ago for the kid's sand pit, saved a load in a couple of tubs and it's been my basing sand from my hobby uh, materials ever since. Now the paints we're going to use in the painting method when we get to it are primarily Games Workshop contrast paints. Now contrast paints is a style of paint that a lot of companies are doing now. I'm using the Games Workshop ones because that's what I'm experimenting with and they are more of like a wash based paint style. We're also going to use some washes and some standard paints but because three quarters of the paints we're going to use are these contrast ones we're going to work off this Wraith Bone spray I'm showing you here which is a pale spray that all the contrast paints want you to use so that the contrast when it goes on actually works. A black spray, the contrast paint will not work on top of. Um, now, but I am spraying black first. I'll explain why a little bit later. So a real good thorough coating of black spray on the models, covering every angle. You'll see here I'm lying the models down so that we can get the angles underneath. And I spray every last part of it black, thin, you know, nice thin coat using the spray appropriately as the instructions on will be. I'm doing it outside, you can see here, so I apologize for the filming. Then once that's thoroughly dry, I'm going on with that white spray, but I'm not covering every angle. I'm spraying from above, you can see here, from about 45 degrees, and what that does is it leaves some black parts showing through from kind of underneath because the spray hasn't hit from underneath. There's enough white on there to make the contrast paint work effectively, and that white will settle on the very tops of the models more than it settles everywhere else and that will give that kind of natural look where sunlight hits from above 
the top colours when we paint them will be more vibrant and as you go into the gaps and cracks you can see here where the black is showing through it will get some really good shading effects now you don't have to do that you don't even have to use a spray can you could base coat this with a brush and just paint that white on yourself but it is quicker and more effective with a spray can or if you've got an airbrush and that's the kind of thing you've got knocking around for some reason you could airbrush the black and then the white on you know whichever way you wanted but just to show you the effect we're starting off with for this method and you can see here how it looks on the model so paler at the top darker underneath and that's the same for the actual miniatures themselves where you've got those kind of real bright vibrant white colors at the top and then underneath you've got those areas that are going to give some really effective shading so that is the models prepared we're not going to talk about painting yet the next video is the first video of the series part two where we're going to do the doors and walls and things are going to launch on the same day this video comes out and then gradually over the coming weeks We'll paint through the entire set together so if you like that like comment subscribe all that youtube jazz hopefully i will see you on another video